in 2013 in Suresh Kumar Kaushal vs Nas Foundation a two judge bench of supreme court recriminalized lgbt lives and said it's left to parliament to decide about it In 2017 in Puttaswami versus Union of India a nine judge bench decision of the Supreme Court found that the right to privacy and the protection of sexual orientation lie at the core of the fundamental rights guaranteed by article 14 15 and 21 of the constitution also said their rights are not so called but are real rights founded on sound constitutional doctrine they in here in the right to life the dwell in privacy and dignity they constitute the essence of liberty and freedom sexual orientation is an essential component of identity equal protection demands protection of the identity of every individual without discrimination on september 6th 2018 india's top court ruled Section 377 is unconstitutional. Let us see what five judges said about LGBTQ population of India. I am what I am, so take me as I am. No one can escape from their individuality. Denial of self-expression is inviting death. The sustenance of identity is the filament of life. The law that dare not speak its name is how the law that exists between same-sex couples. The law deprived them of simple right as human beings to live, love and partner as nature made them. constitution forming the concrete substratum of a fundamental rights that has eluded certain section of a society who are still living in the bondage of dogmatic social norms prejudiced notions rigid stereotypes parochial mindset and bigoted perceptions the human instinct to love is caged by constraining the physical manifestation of the sexuality Gays and lesbians were made subordinate to the authority of a corrosive state. A charter of morality made their relationships hateful. The criminal law became a willing instrument of repression to engage in carnal intercourse against the order of nature, risked being tucked away for 10 years in a jail. the offense would be investigated by searching the most intimate spaces to find telltale signs of intercourse civilization had been brutal not just human beings but many animals also show homosexual behavior it is not an aberration but a variation This community feels inhibited to go for medical aid due to prejudices against them. Homosexuality has been documented in almost 1500 species who unfortunately are not blessed with rational capabilities and the propensity to nurture same-sex thoughts as are found in mankind. An interesting article in this regard notes that no species has been found in which homosexual behavior has not been shown to exist with the exception of species that never have sex at all such as sea urchins and aphids It is pure science a certain manner in which the brain and genitals of an individual function and react whether one sexual orientation is determined by genetic hormonal developmental social and or cultural influences or a combination thereof 
most people experience little or no sense of choice about their sexual orientation. The society cannot remain unmindful to the theory which several researchers conducted both in the field of biological and psychological science have proven and reaffirmed time and again. To compel a person having a certain sexual orientation to proselytize to another is like asking a body part to perform a function it was never designed to perform in the first place. We must, as a society, ask searching questions to the forms and symbols of injustice. Unless we do that, we risk becoming the cause and not just the inheritors of the unjust society. Does the constitution allow a quiver of fear to become the quilt around the bodies of our citizens? In the intimacies which define their identities? If there is only one answer to this question, as I believe there is, the tragedy and the anguish which section 377 inflicts must be remedied. Non-acceptance of natural and innate characteristics by any societal norm or notion and punishment by law on some obsolete idea and idealism affects the kernel of the identity of an individual. Indian citizens belonging to sexual minorities have waited. They have waited and watched as their fellow citizens were freed from the British York while their fundamental freedoms remained restrained under antiquated and anachronistic colonial era law, forcing them to live in hiding, in fear, and as second class citizens. What nature gives is natural. That is the nature within. Thus, that part of the personality of a person has to be respected. The sad inherent nature and associated natural impulses in that regard are to be accepted. The section shrouds the lives of LGBT community in criminality and constant fear mars the joy of life. They constantly face social prejudice disdain and are subjected to the shame of being their very natural selves. Thus, an archaic law which is incompatible with the constitutional values cannot be allowed to be preserved. It would ask of a section of our citizens that while love they may, the physical manifestation of their love is criminal, this is manifest arbitrariness writ large. The hatred, revulsion and disgust of the draftman towards certain intimate choices of fellow human beings. The criminalization of acts in section 377 is not based on a legally valid distinction, but on broad moral proclamations that certain kinds of people singled out by their private choices are less than citizens or less than human. It is difficult to right the wrongs of history, but we can certainly set the course for the future. That we can do by saying as I propose to say, in this case, that lesbians, gays, bisexuals and transgenders have a constitutional right to equal citizenship in all its manifestation. Sexual orientation is recognized and protected by the constitution. The state has no business to intrude into these personal matters, nor can societal notions of heteronormativity regulate constitutional liberties based on sexual orientation. Our constitution nurtures dissent as a safety valve for societal conflict. Our ability to recognize others who are different as a sign of our own evolution. The first step on the long path to acceptance of diversity and variegated hues that nature has created has to be taken now by vanquishing the enemies of prejudice and injustice and undoing the wrongs done. 
history has been witness to a systematic stigmatization and exclusion of those who do not conform to societal standards of what is expected of them. Section 377 rests on a deep-rooted gender stereotypes. In the quest to assert their liberties, people criminalized by the operation of the prohibition challenge not only its existence but also a gamut of beliefs that are strongly rooted in majoritarian standards of what is normal. They have been subjugated to a culture of silence and into leading their lives in closeted invisibility. The case of gay rights undoubtedly seeks justice for gays, but it goes well beyond the concern for the gay community. The effort to end discrimination against gays should be understood as a necessary part of larger effort to end inequality of the sexes. History owes an apology to the members of this community and their families for the delay in providing redressal for the ignominy and ostracism they have suffered through the centuries. The members of this community were compelled to live a life full of fear of reprisal and persecution. This was on account of the ignorance of the majority to recognize that homosexuality is a completely natural condition part of a range of human sexuality. To change the societal bias and root out the wheat, it is the foremost duty of each one of us to stand up and speak up against the slightest form of discrimination against LGBTs that we come across. Let us move on from darkness to light, from bigotry to tolerance, and from the winter of mere survival to the spring of new life. As the herald of New India to a more inclusive society.